Hello everyone, welcome back to another crazy as fuck long game collection update, because why not? I kind of wanted to do one, so here. Uh, sure, this is probably in place of another video, but I didn't have time to work on another video today, so let's just do this. Got a, a lot of games, actually, I mean, if you want to see. Yeah, a lot of games. Yeah, sorry that disoriented you, whatever. But, um, yeah. So I kind of want to start off with a different way instead of just going through, like, console order. Um, I kind of want to talk about the digital games that I got on my Wii U, the Wii side of the Wii U, and the 3DS. And I dropped my 3DS because I'm an idiot. So, yeah. Kind of was, so starting off with just regular eShop titles that I got on my Wii U. Uh, first one being Shovel Knight. And I paid a lot of attention to Shovel Knight. And it's, it's, it's. You know, I've watched a lot of playthroughs of it, I've re watched a couple of reviews for it. Everyone seemed to be loving Shovel Knight, and I'm probably extremely late to the party for this game. But I actually kind of enjoy it. It's a really fun game, honestly. It's, it's got that old-school kind of challenge to it, which some people like, some people don't. Personally, like, I suck at the game, which tells me that's probably old-school challenge, because I really, really suck at old-school games also. So, I, I kind of like it. I like a game that gives me a good challenge, it's a, and it's a fair challenge. I never really felt it was the game cheating me out of anything. So, yeah. Um, next one, being you know, this one that you could get at retail. Shovel Knight, you couldn't. This, that was an eShop only, but this is a retail one. I just decided to download because why not? Uh, Scribblenauts Unlimited. Now, I've never actually been one to want to even check out the Scribblenauts series, ever since it came, like, it and the Drawn to Life series. Um, I did check out one game in Drawn to Life, and that was kind of fun. Um, I might check out some of the others, but who knows. Uh, Scribblenauts, it never really appealed to me. Um, like, the concept, I kind you know, the concept I always thought was kind of interesting, and I'm sorry if it's jumping ar around a lot. I, I don't know why my laptop's doing that right now. Um, but Scribblenauts, like, the concept I've always thought was interesting. Be able to create any item from your imagination, as long as it wasn't a copyrighted thing. Except for uh, Scribblenauts Unmasked, but then it was only if it was a DC copyrighted thing. Um, which makes me wonder, why doesn't Cthulhu have a <laughs> have a copyright? But it's a very interesting, you, you know, now that I've given it a chance, one of my friends, uh, IC, IC Pika, has conv you know, convinced me to check out the Scribblenauts series, saying Scribblenauts Unlimited is probably the best one to start off with. Uh, I decided to check out the game, and... It's fun. It's it's fun for a downtime game. It's not one I'd spend like a shit ton of hours playing. It's just, you know, if I'm bored and I want something to do just to screw around for a bit, it, that's what I go to. You know, I, I go to Scribblenauts Unlimited. And it's definitely a fun game because I can just, you know, have Cthulhu solve every problem in the game. It's like, hey, you want, you want a blue item? It's because it'll cheer you up. Here's a blue Cthulhu. Because screw you, Cthulhu's awesome. It, it, it's just kind of a fun game. It allows you to think of outside the box for puzzles, which is I really like. Um, now for some of the virtual console. Well, I only got one virtual console game on the Wii U, um, and that's Golden Sun. Now, Go Golden Sun, I've actually been kind of wanting to check out ever since I saw trailers for the third game in the series, Dark Dawn, on the DS. Um, I never really did... I did watch a, a play, th an entire playthrough of this game done by one of my favorite Let's Players, New Newfie or Newfi, Newfie Bonga or Newfi Bonga. We just call him Bonga, but he he's a fun guy to watch, and I loved his Golden Sun playthrough. It was a really fun. It looked he made the game look so much fun, so I decided to check it out. It's on the virtual console, so why not? And I gotta say, it is a fun game. I haven't gotten very far in it, so I haven't found any of the gen. I'm still kind of at the beginning of the game. Um, I think I'm at, I want to say I'm at, like, where they're in with the elemental stones at the beginning of the game. So, yeah, that, that's still pr pretty early on. And since it's an RPG, that's extremely early on compared to what I'll be doing, like, late game, I can bet. So, yeah. Um, next up, uh, I don't know how many of you have been paying attention to the Nintendo Directs or what comes up on the eShop. If you don't, Nintendo... I want to say, like, last month, yeah, last month, January, unless this goes up tomorrow, which would be, you know, March, so that'd be two months ago, but whatever, they started putting Wii titles on 
the eShop. They started with Mario Galaxy 2, which I already had. Um, Metroid Prime Trilogy was the last one, which I already have. But the one I didn't have yet was Punch-Out. Punch-Out, I've actually been kind of wanting to check out this game. It, it's, it, it's actually kind of an interesting uh, fighting game, I, I want to say. It, it really requires you to think about your enemy's movements more than just, hey, button mash him to death. No, like, if you try, if you go into this game just trying to button mash your way to victory, they will block everything you do, they will predict all of your movements, pretty much, and you'll get killed. You'll, you'll get knocked out, easily. Like, there's no joke about that. It's, it's definitely a fun fighting game if you want more than just button mash to victory, like, in some other games when you're just fighting the AI. You know, I haven't done a team, team up with it yet, or something, you know, co or multiplayer. But it's kind of interesting, and I'm liking that Nintendo's putting Wii games on the eShop. I don't think they've put any more on the eShop since uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy. I'm hoping that it wasn't just these three, and they're never going to put any more on the eShop. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know. Just, just kind of hoping. Kind of hoping we'll get, like, Wario, uh, Wario Land Shake It, or Mario Kart Wii or something. Because I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. So, yeah. Also, can we get some of the games over on from the Wii Shop channel onto the eShop, please, Nintendo? That'd be awesome. Another one I want to talk about that's on the Wii side of this is uh, Super Smash Brothers, the original N64 one, which means I now have every Smash Brothers game in existence, um, or at least you know the ones you can you can get. And I haven't played it yet. I want. I'm just saying I have it. I haven't played it yet. Because it requires, because since I can't hook up a game GameCube controller to my Wii U, because one, that requires a GameCube adapter, and Nintendo feels like being dicks and not making any more of those, and fuck paying the scalper, uh, scalpers prices for those things, and two, the GameCube adapter only works with Smash Brothers. It doesn't work with any other games. You know, so I, I could have the smarter thing would have been to put it on my Wii, uh, my actual Wii, but. You know, I'm, when was the last time I was smart? But yeah, so I need to find a Wii Classic Controller because, for whatever reason, the Wii U's Classic Controllers, I'm guessing, from what I've read, don't work on the Wii side. So I couldn't play it with, like, a Wii U Classic Controller or Pro Controller or whatever. Which kind of ticks me off because the Wii's Classic Controllers are next to impossible to find. So, Nintendo, you mind fixing this issue so I have less of an issue? Please? Just either... Release more GameCube adapters and allow the GameCube controller to be used on the Wii side, and with more games, or or make it so that the Wii U's classic controller or Pro controller works on the Wii side. Just please. Now, um, for 3DS, I only have one game on here. Like, I, I did download Animal Crossing. Uh, what was it? Animal Crossing New Leaf because I lost my copy of it, so I decided to download it. But uh. Other than that, I did get a uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Now, it's actually I've com pretty much completely beaten the game except for the DLC case. I have not beaten the DLC case yet. I need to get back to that. Um, but yeah, I've completely beaten the game with the help of uh, IC Pika. He helped me a bit through the game, and I gotta say that game is amazing. For the first Ace Attorney game I've actually beaten, yeah, I, I haven't beaten Trials and Tribulations yet. I think I'm close to the end of it, unless there's a fifth case in that game. Because I'm in the fourth case, and those of you who have played it, I'm in like the sec I don't know. I I'm in one of the Tiger's testimonies. Um, but yeah, my whatever. But um, for the first Ace Attorney game I've ever beaten, and for the fact that this actually wasn't made by the people who usually work on Ace Attorney, because the people who were who will usually work on Ace Attorney at the time this was being made were working on Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. And that just shocks me because this game holds everything that makes a perfect Ace Attorney game. I've heard people say that this is a this game is almost if not as good as the original Ace Attorney trilogy. And honestly, I believe them. This game was amazing. It had a it had fantastic writing, you know, a shit ton of hilarious moments. The, the twist at the end of the game was just, oh god, it was so good. But, 
<laughs> you know, it, um, I also love the new character, that the, these several new characters they introduced in it. Um, Athena, who is Phoenix's new sidekick, whatever, you know, little attorney buddy. You know, she has this thing called a... She has this little thing that she wears around her neck called Widget, which allows her to read... Well, it doesn't allow her to read. She, she has this ability to read people's emotions. And Widget makes it, you know, simpler for the player to understand what the hell, you know, emotions they're feeling, basically. And, you know, for like the four or five lines Widget gets in the game, he's actually kind of a cute little character. Um, but yeah, there's also, um... A new detective, yeah, if you played previous Ace Attorney games, Gumshoe isn't in this one. He's replaced with Bobby Fulbright, and Fulbright's a pretty cool character. I actually kind of like him. You know, I don't want him to permanently replace uh, Gumshoe, and, and I'm pretty sure he won't. Those of you that have played and beaten this game know why he wouldn't, but yeah. But I'm not going to spoil it for those that haven't. You know, someone in the comments might, but I don't get comments on most of my videos anyway, so it don't matter. But, um, yeah. It's a fun game. I, I def Oh, and the uh, new prosecutor, Prosecutor Blackwill. I forgot what his first name was, so I just always refer to him as Prosecutor Blackwill, or just Blackwill. Um, he has a first name, but... It, oh, oh, Simon. Simon Blackwill. Um, he, I, he's a great... Like, I almost put him as much as I love Miles Edgeworth. And Edgeworth is, like, my favorite prosecutor in the entire series. So... I, I, he's a great prosecutor. He's a great guy to go up against in the game, and he since he's the prosecutor for pretty much every except for the end game, I mean, it, it, it's a really fun game. I've heard some people say it's not that much fun. It doesn't have things that Ace Attorney should have, or it's too easy. This game was actually kind of difficult at places. So, uh, fuck you. Yeah, saying fuck you for having a different opinion. Don't really care. Probably lost like ten subscribers doing that, but uh, whatever. Not here for the subscribers. I could drop down to three and not really give a shit. But yeah, that's it for the uh, virtual console. That took like 12 minutes. Let's see how long the uh, physical games take. Uh, first one being Streets of Rage 2. Yeah, see? That's what it says. Streets of Rage 2. There you go. If it reads, whatever. Alright. Yeah. Uh, this game's actually kind of fun. It's a neat little beat em up fighting game, whatever. Um, I don't play beat em ups that often. Or, well, I do, but, you know, because I did that playthrough of Spider Man Shared Dimensions. And this is a cool little 2D beat em up. Uh, I haven't played any of the other games in the Streets of Rage series. I might check them out. Um, I, I thought there was a Streets of Rage game that was released on the PS2. But I'm not sure. I don't know if it's just a game that the fans don't ever, like, the internet in its entirety doesn't want to talk about. Or if it actually ended at the Genesis, uh, may I maybe a Saturn entry also? Was it just Genesis, or did it have, like, later entries? I, I can't remember. Um, I swore it had later ones past Genesis, but I'm not sure. Yeah, this is a fun little game. Uh, uh, you know, I believe you can play it on, like, several different collections. You know, several different Genesis collections. So yeah, if you, it's a fun little game to check out on any of those. Um, or you can get the game on its own. But yeah, that's it for Genesis. Next up is about uh, three little Wii games. As you can see what the first one is. Metroid Other M. Yeah. I think I got this game for free. I'm not sure. It says I paid 16 bucks, but um, the, re the retro gaming store I got this from... Um, has a buy three get well I got a card that allows me to get buy three get one free every time I go in there for until Halloween so yeah I might have gotten this for free not sure but, I mean this is probably the most controversial game in the Metroid series anyone that's played it knows why anyone that's been on the internet knows why you woke up one video for Metroid Other M that isn't gameplay you'll see why it's controversial now, per, do I believe it's a bad game? No. I believe it is, a, it is a fun game wrapped around in a shitty story. The gameplay itself is amazing. I love running around, shooting things. Um, little quick step dodging thing, that, that can be bug, that, that can be kind of annoying at times. It may make the game too easy for some people, but considering how difficult the game can be, I can forgive that. <laughs> The story, though, is where I have my issues. Mostly because the game expects a fuck out, 
fuck ton out of you before you even bother to touch it. The game expects you to know everything about the Metroid series in its entirety. It expects you to know everything about the Metroid manga, which I've never read and didn't even know existed until this game came out, and everyone was using that as an, ex as an excuse. I'm sorry if I scratch my ear, it's not because I'm lying. I really didn't know it existed. It's just freaking my hair. I need a haircut. You need a haircut badly, but it bugs me. But, uh, yeah. Um, it, well, let's see, what else? The manga, um, Metroid mythology, it, it just expects a fuck ton out of you for the story. That, and the voice acting. The voice acting in this game, I'd put it on par with the original Resident Evil. And that's pretty bad. It's pretty goddamn cheesy, too. Yeah. I don't know. I, I still think it's kind of a fun game, though. I mean, I'm glad I got it. So, I mean, I watched a... F the one guy that really convinced me to check it out was uh, Nakatalili. His Let's Play of this game is probably better than I could ever do. Mostly because I edit, I can't edit for shit. But, yeah. If you, if you want to check out a guy that actually has fun with this game, check out his Let's Play and he will give you all the information along the way that you need to know in order to understand the story. Whether it's from other Metroid games or whatever. But there's that. Next up, ooh, this one. This is a good one. Xenoblade Chronicles. Oop. Yeah, this motherfucker. I was part. Uh, I um, I was you know I was help. I was part of the guys that really tried to help Operation Rainfall get off the. Try to get up going where it needed to go to get this kind of shit over here. This last story in Pandora's Tower, or whatever the fuck the third one was. I think it was Pandora's Tower, pretty sure. Didn't actually know we got Pandora's Tower until like a few months, like a month ago. Or a few weeks ago. Because when I heard, we were only going to get this and last story, and we weren't going to get Pandora's Tower. But from what I hear, we did end up getting it. I don't know. But this game is amazing. It's rare as shit to find, apparently. Because there was only one store within 100 miles of me that actually had this fucking thing. And I got the last copy of it. And I gotta say, it's worth it. It's worth that fucking $60 new price tag. This game is amazing. I mean... Ugh. I, I, know, I know this. the next one in the series is, is gonna have nothing to do with this. But playing this makes me more, like even more hype for Xenoblade Chronicles X. I cannot wait for that game to come out. Even though it's probably gonna be nothing at all like this. It's gonna have like mech traveling... Completely different characters, a completely different world. Um, hell, it's actually going to take place, I believe, in like a like a way futuristic like Earth instead of you know on top on the body of a gigantic Titan thing that this one does. But yeah, it's a very fun game. I love it so much. One of my you guys, uh, if anyone watch checks out uh, Icy's channel, you know that him and I do a lot of streams of this game. And it's a really fun game. So yeah. If you can manage to find it, get it. Do not think twice about it. Get it. Even if you don't have a Wii, get it. Because then when you get a Wii, you'll have the best game in the entire on the entire system already there. Boom. Next up is a game that I really got because I wanted a new real-time strategy game to play. And I was kind of disappointed with what I ended up getting. Battalion Wars 2. Yeah, well, now when I say upsetting, I don't mean the game's bad. By any means, if I went into this game expecting j just um, a strategy game, you know, just you're expecting your average strategy game like Pikmin or something, I I'd probably love it. But since I was kind of going into it expecting like one of those top-down strategy games where you select a small army and then have them go off over this way and select another small group and have them go that way and fight enemies and you take no part in it other than kind of watching them, that, you know, I probably would have liked this more. <laughs> because that's, th this is basically Pikmin, but with military dudes. I haven't played the first Battalion Wars that was released on the GameCube, mostly because, one, my GameCube doesn't work. Two, the Wii's in the living room. And, um, yeah, the living room's almost always taken up. So, yeah. 
But still, it's a fun little game for what it is. I need to play more of it. Uh, from what it looked like, it was a short game. What was it? Um, yeah, five massive theaters of wars, like five areas of the game. Um, I think each area has like four or five levels. So it sounds like a pretty short game. But whatever. I'm pretty sure if I got back into it, I'd enjoy it. Um, that's it for Wii. Now for the, like, fuck ton of PS2. Because the PS2 is, like, my favorite system. Okay? I want to say this right now. The PS2, to me, is, like, the best console to ever exist. I mean, not because it, not because I'm a Sony fanboy. Anyone that knows me knows I'm not a fucking Sony fanboy. If anything, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Um, you know, and it's not because it's the best selling system of all time. Or whatever, or it has the text, or whatever. It's because of its huge as fuck library, and because of its huge as fuck library, there's not much that people can actually agree is what is the best game on this system. You know, what game do we want to see come back in like a remaster or something? You know, there, you know, like if you were to talk about the GameCube, you know, your most common answer would probably be Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, like any of the Nintendo titles. You talk about the Xbox, they're gonna say like Halo. Or something like that. Um, but when you talk about the beast that is the PS2. If you even talk about the PS3. People are going to say like Uncharted. Or Last of Us. You know. It's pretty set in stone what those ga what they're going to say. Very rarely you're going to get an offsetting answer. And even my previous systems before this. The Super Nintendo. You know Mario World. Chrono Trigger. Something like that. It, but with the PS2. I've seen many conversations. With um, people talking like, "What's your favorite game on the PS2? What's an underrated game on the PS2? What you know? What game do you want to see come back to the PS2?" Never once have I actually seen someone actually repeat the same answer as someone else. You know, sure, there's the people that there's like the several couple people I'll say like Jack and Daxter series, the Ratchet and Clank series, the Sly Cooper series, but then you get people that will say like this year next game here, Dot Hack Infection or the Dot Hack series in general. I don't, I haven't played any other games in this series. But, um, so enough of me gushing over the PS2. As you can tell, I mean, the reason I really wanted to gush over it is because with all these new PS2 games I got, it's the first system I now have that has well over 100 games in my collection for it. Yeah, Dot Hack Infection. When I started to play it, um, I actually kind of got stuck after a bit. I didn't know what the hell I was supposed to do. And then when I looked up what I was supposed to do, I kind of felt like an idiot. Um, but right now, now, the one thing that really kind of ticked me off, and this is my fault, it's not the game's fault at all, um, since I am so used to later games having like autosave, and even some PS2 games had autosave, um, this game doesn't. Uh, I There was a time where I spent like two or three hours just playing through the game and completely forgot to save, only to get a game over, and when you game over, your only option is to go back to the main menu. I hate those kind of games. You know, at least let me just continue from, like, the last, like, checkpoint or when I entered an area. Or continue from the computer screen or something. Like Kingdom Hearts, even. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts had set save points. But it still allowed you to start off, you know, if you died, it allowed you to start off from the beginning of an area. Not from where your last save was. I mean, this this is me. This is because I'm so used to playing on later games, and so going back to something like this, it kind of bugs me a bit. But th that's because of when it came out and shit. Now, if there's one thing I can say, it's awesome. This thing came with the DVD to Dot Hack Liminality, um, which is part of a four episode, I believe, a four episode OVA of the Dot Hack anime, and this one only has, like, I think one of the episodes on it. Like, all four of the DVDs are in each of the different Dot .hack games. So I think that's kind of cool. And it's a really fun game, though. I really do kind of enjoy enjoy the whole layout of it. And how a lot of things are integrated into this MMO setting it has. I, I think the MMO setting really works for this. And it makes me want to check out the other games in the series. Yeah, there's that. Next up is a game I got really just for nostalgia's sake. I mean, I, I didn't have much other reason other than, I'm feeling nostalgic. Let's get a game I played the shit out of when I was a kid. Well, rented the shit out of when I was a kid just to relieve some stress. Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Yeah. 
physically that's what it was. This game's an old, like the best stress reliever I think anyone could ask for. You play as the Hulk, going through a, several gigantic fucking cities, and you have complete control. You could blow up every building in sight. You can run rampages through the town. It's amazing what you can fucking do in this game. It makes me wish there was a, not a more recent game like hell. It does be Marvel in general. Marvel characters in general doesn't even need to be Hulk. I just want like another game in general that has these kind of characters that have this much brute force that can take down gigantic cities in a huge sweep. That would be fun. And no, not like enemy monsters. I'm talking about like the character you play as. But yeah, there's not much else I can say about this game. It's Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Anyone that played the game knows there's not much else to it. There's missions and a story, but who the fuck plays the game for those? Um, on the other hand, you play this for story and for amazing music and gameplay and everything else because this game here is fucking amazing. It's Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3. This is, this was the first Persona game, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei game I ever played. Um, I really wanted to get into the Persona series. One sec, I'm going to actually turn my thing down. I really wanted to get to the Persona series. Um, I know Persona 3 FES was probably the better way to go, but I couldn't find that anywhere. But I got this because, one, it's Persona 3. Two, it came with an awesome art book. Three, it came with an awesome soundtrack. Um, I lost the soundtrack somewhere. It's probably in here somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. Um, even the back of this game. Look at the fucking artwork on the back of this shit. I know it's probably hard to see with the reflection, but damn, man, look at that shit. Uh, but it's a really fun game, though. It has kind of a creepy story that I've realized trying to de try to describe what the fuck goes on in this game to someone who's never played it or watched any videos of it um, kind of doesn't make any sense. It makes you sound crazy. It's, yeah, it's one of those games where it's better to see what's going on here than to be told what's going on here. So it's a very fun game. I am enjoying it. I can't wait to get to the later game where some, because uh, I watched a full playthrough. Well, not a full playthrough, but a, a good chunk of a playthrough of this game. And I know there's some characters that come in later on that are probably some of my favorite characters of this entire story. So yeah, that's uh, Persona 3. Um, next up, the next one in that series, Persona 4. Yeah. <laughs> This one, also, came with the soundtrack, but I think like every copy of Persona 4 does, so at least pretty sure they all do. I don't know if they all do or not, but yeah. Um, Persona 4, this was actually the one I wanted to check, start off checking out. It's actually a playthrough of this game, uh, Nakatalili's playthrough of this game is what got me interested in the Persona series to begin with. Um, I actually kind of like the story and the writing, to, I mean, Teddy... You're fucking bear puns, dude. You're bear puns. I, I, I don't know what to say about him. <laughs> oh god, Ugh, his bear puns though. But uh, I, I actually, I'm, what else? What can I really say about this game that I didn't just say about Persona 3? You know, soundtrack amazing. Although I kind of prefer Persona 3 soundtrack a bit better, or a bit more, whatever. Story pretty damn good. Although again, one of those stories that sounds kind of crazy. Until you see what's going on, and even then, I'm pretty sure you'll still think it's crazy that the people who made this game were probably on some kind of drugs. Um, which wouldn't surprise me. That's that's kind of Atlas's thing, is their games make you think they're high. But yeah, that's, um, I don't know. It, it's just a fun little game. What can I say about Persona 4? I did just fucking spend like, like a minute and a half or so on Persona 3. There is that. Next up is a game that I personally feel is kind of underrated. Um, Zone of the Enders. Yeah. Now, the reason, I mean, this game sold a fuck ton. This game, so, some people might be saying, dude, it sold like a shit ton. It sold enough to get a fucking sequel. Um, it even sold well enough to get an HD remaster on the, the PS3. So why, what the hell are you saying it's underrated for? Well, I consider it underrated mostly because people don't really like the game. The only reason this thing sold a lot is, uh, that right there. Yeah. 
This thing comes with a demo to Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, I haven't played that yet. Should though. So that would be the first Metal Gear I've ever Metal Gear Solid anything I ever played. Um, some people may say well, you should go and play the first Metal Gear Solid, but I can't fucking find a copy of the first Metal Gear Solid. And I can't find a copy of Snake Eater either. So this would if I ever decided to stick this into my PS2, that's what it'd be. Um, but some of the interest I actually find is a kind of a fun beat 'em up. Granted, the voice acting can be kind of ear grating a bit. Um, but other than that, I, I really don't mind it. You know, it's a fun game. The combat's really fluid. I love the combat. Once you get used to the controls, this game becomes really goddamn fun. Um, I haven't played Second Runner, which I've heard, uh, which is the second game, the sequel to this. Zero, uh, but I've, I've heard uh, the, zone, the Second Runner improved a lot on this game. But it, it's still a really fun game, and I kind of wish more people gave it a chance instead of buying it just for the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. Now, I can't blame them for buying it just because of the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo, because... It's Metal Gear fucking Solid. If Metal, if friggin' the ground Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes came on a copy of a fucking My Little came with a copy of a My Little Pony game, I'm pretty sure that game would sell like fucking hotcakes to more than just the Brony community. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this next one I'm probably gonna actually piss off some people with my thoughts on it. Um, Time Splitters 2. Yeah. Um, Time Splitters 2, I never played the first Time Splitters. Um, I've always heard the Time Splitters games were probably some of the best FPS games ever made. This one, I started playing it, um, I don't know if it's the controls, if it's me being used to more modern shooters, uh, but something about the controls in this game feels awkward as fuck. I don't know, it's... I should probably get farther into the game, but I don't know, the, the controls just feel so damn awkward to use. I don't know, it's... I, I haven't gotten past the first level due to how awkward I feel the controls are. So, yeah, it's, it's really all I can say about Time Splitters 2. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to the story, so, I don't know, whatever. Um. So yeah, now that I've lost uh, a third of my subscriber base, again, don't really give two shits. Um, next up, Slythe. Well, uh, did I really say Slythe? Sly Three Honor Among Thieves. Yeah, I had to remember which one this one's because I always get Honor Among Thieves and Band of Thieves mixed up in my head. Um, but yeah, I, uh, this was a game that was on that demo disc that I had, uh, that jam pack. Um, that I showed off back in, like, when I started uploading these game collections videos. But, um, the demo was actually pretty fun, and then Kadikris started doing his retrospective on the Sly series. And so I really wanted to check it out, actually. It's, and what, for what it is, I mean, since, bef other than this, the only game in the series I've actually played is, uh, the first one, Thievius Raccoonus. This one's actually a lot of fun. It improves upon a lot of the shit that I kind of didn't like from Thievius Raccoonus. Um, so, yeah, it's a fun game. Definitely got a great story. And I just really enjoy it. Although, there's one section of the game that I really don't enjoy, and that's this area where you have to r drive a boat and shoot... You have to drive a boat, jump over obstacles, and shoot bad guys all without getting killed. If you get killed, you have to restart the entire thing over, and that really pisses me off. Ugh. Other than that, it's a fun little game. Um, I do like that it starts off, like, right at the final level. I mean, I know a lot of games do that, but whatever. Uh, next up is probably one of the most important games in, uh, not only the PS2's life, but, um, gaming. Gaming in general. Uh, Ico. Yeah. I I Ico. Yeah, the, uh, sp spiritual... What, what, what is it? Is it the spiritual pre sequel, prequel, or something? Uh, I, I don't remember. To Shadow of the Colossus, another game I haven't played yet. Had the chance to. Well, I played the demo of it, but I had the chance to pick it up. I didn't take the chance, and now I can't find it. Yeah. 
I've recently I've learned that this game is actually so good, or th th so many things are so good about this game that it's even being taught in like gaming classes, like classes that teach you how to make games or something like that. This game is actually like t taught as a subject, or at least used as an example for several different things, and I think that's kind of interesting. Now that I actually I'm playing it. The granted, there's some things in this game I kind of don't like. There's there's some kind of awkward feeling shit. I'm sure the fanboys of it will say that was it was done like that on purpose, but whatever. There, like there was this there's a section like right at the beginning of the game, um, where you have to jump onto where you have to not only lower the girl's cage. I don't remember the name of the girl. Um, yeah, princess. Oh. Oh, her, her name's Aiko. Or, or, wait. The kid's Aiko or the princess is Aiko? I don't know. The girl. The girl that's in the cage. You have to rescue her by lowering the cage. And then you have to jump onto the cage. And it took me so long to get the jumping actually onto the cage precise. Oh, that bugged me so much. But after that, I actually thought the game was pretty fun. Now, I'm running around with the princess. I'm just going to call her a princess. If her name's Aiko, then fuck it. But, um, but the princess in hand actually feels good. I I don't mind that this entire game is a, uh, whatever it's called, a, um, shit. Ugh, I can't remember what that name is. Um, when, you know, with those things, we have to guide someone from the beginning to an end, like point A to point B. That's what this entire thing is. You know, some people are like, oh, that, that's horrible in other games, but including myself and everyone else, they seem to make an exception for Ico, and it's a really fun game. I'm sorry if you heard a Facebook message go off. That was, that was me. Um, 37 minutes into this thing, and we're starting even halfway through. Shit. I probably should do this in multiple parts, but fuck it. I got all night to upload this. Anyone that clicked on it is going to sit through all this shit, and people probably get pissed that I made it this long. But, uh, yeah. Next up is, an, is uh, the, an, an, entr the fir first game in a series I haven't played. Until uh, now, and even now, I only barely played it. Max Payne. Yeah. Now I don't remember. Um, I think I heard someone say like the PS2 version is like the worst way to play it because I've heard like the Xbox version is like a hundred times superior because of like frame rate and graphic things or control things or whatever. Um. You know, from the brief that I've played it, it's not a bad game. You know, I really like the bullet time. It, it actually feels satisfying to shoot someone with bullet time. Um, the story, the, the story, oh god. The st I love how, one, I love how the story is told with the comic book thing. Um, two, the, the story itself is just, oh. I don't know how many games I've played that had, like, a heart-wrenching story that grabs, that just it goes like that. So yeah, just rips it out right at the very beginning of the fucking thing. I mean, oh man. Just, man, I need to play the later ones of this, but I also need to get through this first. Oh man. Although I think Max Payne 2 was only released on uh, Xbox 360. Maybe PS3. I don't remember. I don't remember what the hell it was released on. But uh, next up, Let's see what else. Are there? There's there's this, and then there's four PS2 games left, and then a fuck ton of everything else. Um, next up is a collection disc. Um, you know me, I like since I like to collect games. Uh, since I one, I like to collect games, but if I have a collection disc like this, I'm not gonna go out of my way to get the others, the the ones that are in this. But uh, yeah, this is the Mega Man. Anniversary collection. Yeah, I've heard I've heard this is actually a pretty hard one to come across. Granted, not as hard to come across as the Mega Man X collection, but still, this one's from what I've heard, this one's actually another hard one to come across. Uh, this game comes with Mega Man one through eight, so basically every classic Mega Man game uh, that came out at the time, because nine and ten didn't exist. And, uh, two Japanese exclusive ones, I believe. Do-do-do-do, does it say ever, Mega Man 1 through 8, 
two never before seen released in the U.S. arcade games. Yeah, they don't say what the titles of them are, but you can look it up. I'm too lazy to see what they are. But those two are locked from like the beginning of the game, I think. Yeah, it's a it's a fun little it's a fun game. I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, I love going back and playing the old Mega Man games. Simply, well, one I've never actually played a make uh, old classic Mega Man game other than Mega Man X4 before getting this. And for anyone asking what was the first one I played on this, it was Mega Man 2, obviously, because Mega Man 2. It, it's like the most popular one in the series, so I figured why not check out why. Um, haven't played much of the other seven Mega Man games in this thing. Um, I almost want to check out Mega Man 7 simply because I hear that one's shit, and I want to see why it's shit. Um, maybe also Mega Man 5 because I've heard that one's pretty good. I mean, I've heard like they're all pretty good as far as like just platformers in general. Mega Man's the way to go. I don't know why my voice went like that, but it did. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. It's a pretty, pretty damn good collection, I gotta say. I mean, for as many games that come with it, and I only, I only paid, like, a little, like, uh, $18 for it. Actually, no, I, I paid even less than that, because I got 10% off on it. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fun little game. If you can find that collection, and you don't already have Mega Man 1 through 8, definitely check it out. The control, now, I've heard... The GameCube version of that is shit because the B button is jump and A is shoot, which to me sounds stupid as fuck. And to too many, and like everyone else that's ever played it, agree it's stupid as fuck. So don't pick it up on the GameCube. Pick it up on PS2, or I believe it was also released in the original Xbox. If you have that, I, I don't know many people actually still have the original Xbox. Or at least admit that they do. But, uh, yeah. Next up, I decided to check out more in this series, because why not? Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando. Yeah. And I gotta say, this one I actually kind of enjoy a bit more than Up Your Arsenal. Um, I don't know, I don't know what it is about this game, but I, I, just, I just enjoy it more than Up Your Arsenal. Probably because, uh, I don't know, I haven't played Up Your Arsenal in a while. But, uh, um, I, mean, I just, I, for whatever reason, I really enjoy this game. I really, I really enjoy it more than that one. And I really can't put my finger on why. Um, it, I don't know, I, I just think it's a, it's a good game. I believe that's the second in the series, and from what I've heard, some people claim that it is the best between the, best in the original trilogy, not counting, uh, Ratchet Deadlocked, which, for the longest time, I thought was the first Ratchet and Clank game, or game in the series, whatever. But yeah, it's a fun little game. It, it, um, again, I haven't played much into it, so I can't say much. But the writing's pretty good and stuff like that. So it, it's Ratchet and Clank. You can find this basically anywhere. It's been released in like collections and shit. So yeah. Next up is one that I didn't think I'd actually ever check out, but I decided to simply because fuck it. I guess is the best way I can put it. Jack X Combat Racing. Yeah, made by the same, uh, I believe it was made by the same people that made uh, the Crash Team Racing, another game I need to check out at some point. But yeah, th this game, I I, it's better than I gave it, than I thought. I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be shit. I thought it was going to be a shit Mario Kart clone. And while it's a Mario Kart clone, there's no denying it. What it adds to the Mario Kart formula, I guess I could say, um, is definitely like a lot better. <laughs> I mean, it's great. great. It's a, it's pretty much an easy game. I think I've gotten like halfway, if not over halfway, through the game without ever losing a race. So, um, and by losing, I mean like coming in at least third. Because if you come in at least third, the game allows you to progress on, or at least. As far as I'm into the game, I haven't come across a single race where if you come in, if you don't come in first place, they're not going to let you keep going. I don't know. The story basically exists just to have a story and to do, and to have a reason for these characters to be racing. Um, I don't know. It's not better than Jack 3 or Jack 2 or Precursor or Legacy. Um, but it, it's a fun game. Not better than Mario Kart, though. Still, whatever. 
Next up is a game I checked out simply because I heard it was amazing. And um, I really shouldn't have listened. And it's SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now, okay, I, I should take back the whole thing of me, I shouldn't have listened, whatever. But, it's a fun, it's, it, um, it's probably because I played the movie game before playing this, and I don't know which of them came out first, this or the movie game, but to me, the Spongebob movie game was like ten times better than this thing is. It's not a bad game, but... A lot of it feels just kind of bland. Like the whole area of the jelly, of the like the jellyfish, you know, area, whatever, just feels bland. There's just not much there, and it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of like side stuff for you to do on the way to getting to the end of the level, like the movie game has. I don't know. I I just. Uh. I haven't gotten to play as the other characters yet, so maybe playing as them is a, it will make the game more fun. Um, but, I don't know. I need to get a bit farther in the game. So, so I'm probably judging it too early, but don't really care. Next up, this is the last of the PS2. I, I, for right now, anyway. So I feel like doing another video, and I can guarantee another fuck ton of PS2 games will be in there. But this one is... I don't, I'm don't. i going to say either Forgotten on Purpose, or accidentally forgotten and should be brought up again vex that's, that's all this is called just vex just just vex there's not much to it um i gotta say i, I or at least what i've played of it, it it comes across as a basic platformer with basic beating them up beat em ups powers or whatever like fighting fi fighting punching whatever um I don't know if that was revolutionary for the time. It claims it was revolutionary on the back of the box, but, you know, that's just to advertise itself and say, oh my god, it's just one of the best things ever for right now. You should totally play it just to fight, even though a good chunk of the game is a really focused on platforming. At least, that's what I've seen so far. Um, I do like, I do think it's kind of an interesting game, though, and um, whether or not uh, we should it should be remi remembered... I can't really say. I need to play more of it to get an opinion on that. But, yeah, it does have some kind of awkward shit every now and again. But, whatever. I'm kind of getting tired of going on like this, but we're halfway through. I think. Um, so, yeah, N64 games. Two of them. Oh, man, my nose. Oh, I really should have split this in multiple parts, but don't really care anymore. i would gotten started. The train's rolling. Can't, can't stop it simply because I, I don't want to keep going. I mean, if I get this over with now, fuck it. Um, but yeah, starting off, um, the original Paper Mario. Yeah. Original one. Yeah. Um, this is the last one I needed. Um, or, yeah, like I say, it's the last one I needed. Yeah, the, the other Paper Mario game that, um, that I, you, that I don't have, or didn't have in an update is in here. It'll be here in, like, a bit. I think, yeah, it's pretty far down. I can see it. Um, yeah, this is the last one I needed. Got it yesterday. Um, I gotta say, I'm, it's pretty fun, but, uh, Super Paper Mario is still my favorite, and I do think Thousand Year Door... Improved a lot on this game. Not to say it's bad by any means, but it's it's a fun game. It's a especially since it was uh, supposed to be the sequel to Mario RPG. Um, it, I definitely think it's better than Mario RPG. Now, um, I, I think there's a red dot on my head. A sniper across the street is he's gonna shoot me for saying that. But yeah, also like it got a little end label. Paper Mario. See see that see a little end label. I didn't put that on there. That was from the store. But, um, yeah. It, it's still a fun little game. It's, it's just, just Paper Mario. It doesn't have the curses from uh, Thousand Year Door, which I think kind of added a lot to the game. 
doesn't have the, the freaking amazing story and fantastic as all shit characters from Super. But it's still a fun game. Yeah, for, for what it was. Yeah. Next up, uh, I would pull this game out, but nah, is spiritual successor to Golden Eye. Perfect Dark. Yeah, and also this is like the first, believe it or not, this is the first N64 game that I actually got in its original box. Yeah, I don't think I, any of the other N64 games that I have actually came in its original box. This is the first one. I paid like 20 bucks for it. I kind of like that. I kind of like that it comes with the box. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe, maybe, maybe so many of you would be like, hey, just, just give me the game. Give me the fucking game. And throw throw the box out, but uh, not me. I, I kind of like that it came with the box. Now to get the game back in there. As far as Perfect Dark itself goes, it's a fun game. Um, whether or not I prefer it over Goldeneye, I I can't really say. I haven't played enough of it. I haven't played enough of it or Goldeneye to say really. Um, so they're about even in my head. I know many people say GoldenEye is better than Perfect Dark. I know many people say Perfect Dark is better than GoldenEye. I know many people say they are remakes or sequels or whatever were shit. So, but this, for these, they're, they're fun. So yeah, so that's all I gotta say. Um, I could comment on the weapons, but I haven't played that much of it. So there's a lot of weapons that come into late game. Yeah, that's it for N64. Um, one DS game, one. One, one, one regular DS, not 3DS. 3DS got quite a few. Um, yeah. Next up would be Kirby Mass Attack. Because 10 Kirby's is cute as shit. I don't care what any of you fuckers say. Kirby's cute as fuck. 10 of them is even cuter. And I don't care if admitting to cute shit is like not manly because when the fuck have I ever been manly these are these muscles this is fat fuckers this is fat because <laughs> I, I ain't got no muscles so I ain't I'm fucking manly this shit if I, if I got hair I don't know I, I already tried shaving recently um yeah but K Kirby it's, it's, it's cuteness it spread into 10 Kirby's but without the ability to copy abilities, and god damn, my head, my head itches, and that's how I scratch. I, I scratch like that because I think I'm a dog or some shit. I don't know. Uh, this is how I get when it's like whatever, when it's midnight. Yeah, I'm, re I'm recording this at like 12:58 a.m. Because why not? Um, but yeah, it, it's a fun game. You know, for for being a Kirby game where you can't copy abilities, that's better than Kirby's Dream Land, which was another Kirby game where you can't copy abilities. It, it's it's a fun game. Uh, what else can I say? It's, it's being able to control ten Kirby's all at once. Yeah, some people may think, oh, it's too much for me. Oh, I can't think of how to control them all, but they control just fine for me. The stylus controls they work great. And then again. I'm the person that thought it's like it has Spirit Tracks number two on my freaking favorite Zelda games, and I had absolutely no issues with its touchscreen controls. But yeah, so whatever. Yeah, that's that's Kirby Mass Attack. Cuteness times ten. That that's a, that's the slogan for it. Cuteness times ten. Cutest cutest fucking thing in the world ever ever made. I don't think Kirby could ever get cuter than that. Except for how what he how he looks in like the intro cutscene to uh, Rainbow Curse, because oh god, him rolling simply because he saw an apple roll. Oh, that's 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 too much cuteness. That's too much cuteness for one man to handle. Uh, next up, I want to find the fucking case. I don't know what I did with the case of this thing. Um, th these are 3DS games now, by the way. Yeah, I don't even know why I'm putting it in this, but uh. Smash 3DS, yeah, um, Smash, Smash Brothers 3DS, y'all knew I kind of had it, I've talked about how much I had it, um, on the playthrough, the Let's Play I'm currently doing of Smash Wii U, um, whether, what I prefer either way, Smash Wii U, I, I prefer Smash Wii U over this, I, 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 um, until yesterday, 
I didn't even play this until early since Smash Wii U came out. Yeah, the only reason I played it yesterday was simply because I was staying the night at a friend's house and he didn't want to play Smash Wii U, and he wanted to play Magic the Gathering, and I wanted to play my 3DS. So, yeah. Like, he wanted to play Magic Gathering online, not, like, against me or anything. Yeah. This is Smash 3DS. It's basically the same as Smash Brothers Wii U, except it's on the 3DS. It's got, like, one or two modes the Wii U version does, and, like, the Street Pass mode, which is boring as all hell, kind of like Smash Tour. And it's got Smash Run, which is, like, a trillion times better than Smash Tour could ever hope to be. Well, yeah, it's, that's all I can really say for Smash 3DS. If you played Smash Wii U, which, if you play this, you've, you've played Smash Wii U. You, you have a Wii U. If you have a Wii U and you don't have a 3DS, what the fuck's wrong with you? What the fuck? The fuck, man? The fuck? Man, just, just what even? Un unless you're just not into handheld gaming, in which case, why? I mean, is it because you don't ever travel? Cause you never leave your house. I, I never leave my fucking house. I love, did I love handheld gaming? Fucking love the shit out of handheld gaming. And yet I never take my 3DS anywhere. Like I, I take breaks at work, but I don't play my 3DS when I'm on a break. Cause it goes, I don't know why I don't. I don't know. Is there only like three people left that are watching this? <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I feel like there's only like two or three people that are watching this in the comments. If I get any comments on this video, it's going to be like, why the fuck is this video like an hour and a half long? Um, but yeah, next up is... Theodore Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call. Now, really, I don't even know why this was actually the first one to pick up. It's probably one of the most recent ones compared to some of these others. Um... But Theater Rhythm, Final Fantasy Curtain, uh, Theater Rhythm, um, I know it's a sequel to another game that's just called Theater Rhythm, Final Fantasy, so Curtain Call, I guess. Curtain Call is actually a fun game. Um, I really got it simply because I wanted another rhythm game to play, and Final Fantasy has some of the best fucking music ever. You don't actually turn the Wii U off. Um, it's, wasting, it's wasting electricity that I'm, I'm not going to play it after recording this shit. I'm just going to go to bed. Um, I'll have this upload and whatnot, but whatever. Yeah, um, it's, I want another rhythm game. Final Fantasy has great music, and uh, surprise! I was surprised by the track listing in this. I, I thought it was just gonna have like music from the more recent Final Fantasy games, maybe a couple from like Final Fantasy VII and three slash four, whatever our Final Fantasy three was. Um, but I was surprised. It's, it has music from every main series Final Fantasy game, every Side series of Final Fantasy, including Mystic Quest and Crystal Chronicles, uh, and Tactics, which I never hear anyone talk about those. Um, like Mystic Quest, I hear talked about either as a shit game or from someone who lets nostalgia decide if a game's good or not. Um, and then the freaking Final Fantasy VII movie, the Final Fantasy VII movie, the music from the from the Final Fantasy 7 movie in this thing. N not the Spirits Within movie, because, you know, I, I guess Square's like, oh, we don't even remember that fucking shit exists. I do, because I got a copy of the movie, not the 7 movie. But, uh, you know, the song listing, the song... The one thing I can say bad about this, though, is you literally have to play the main mode to unlock everything. Like, anything else you can do in the game. To unlock the options... To unlock the options, you have to play the main mode. You have to get enough points in the main mode to unlock the options. Really? To unlock the ability to delete a profile, you have to play the main mode. What the fuck kind of shit is that? Whatever. Yeah, that's, that's this. It's a fun game, though. Next up is another one of Atlas's Wet Dreams... Because they, they like thinking about teenagers fucking for whatever reason. Um, Conception 2. Uh, what is it? Children of the Seven Stars. That's what it is. Yeah. And when I say they like to think about children, teenagers fucking, there, there's no, there, there's nothing else. There's, there's no better proof than this. This, this holy angel of teenagers going at it. 
granted, they never, like, explicitly say, baby, you wanna fuck? <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's hinted at a lot, and they call it, whatever the fuck, like, class mating. They call it class mating, because, I don't know, I mean, a freaking baby gets born at the end of it, so why not? Um, other than that, you know, I do like some, you know, talking to you, you know, I like the whole, you know, building relationships so the children you make will be better, and the children you make will, like, they're, they only exist to fight, which, you know, I can guarantee, like, some person who's all for equal rights or something's gonna look at this game and be like, what the fuck? You're making a game that's telling the players that children should only be born to fight? The fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, dude, they're not actual children. Granted, I think they can become actual, like, adults and shit. I, I don't know. Um, the dungeon, I like the dungeons, though. The dungeons are fun. The dungeons are where it's at. Um, I do know the first conception I'll probably never play. It was never released over here. It was a PSP exclusive, so whatever. I don't think you need to. I don't know if it makes any references to anything that goes on in that game. But yeah. Next up, uh, an Atlas game that really doesn't, like, the only Atlas game I've seen that doesn't have, like, any kind of, like, talk to these people more and eventually you'll fuck type of things. Um, see, this is what it gets like when it's one in the morning. You know, I can guarantee if I recorded this when it was like three in the afternoon, it wouldn't be like this. I wouldn't be saying half the shit I'm saying. And you wouldn't be cringing as hard, the three of you, the two of you that are here watching left, because you're like my really close friends and I love you. Love you. As you can see, this is a Shimagami Devil Summoner Soul Hacker. And that's what it's that's what's called. Yeah, long as fuck name because Shimagami. Yeah. Now uh, this was what like um this is like the one this one Shimagami Tensai game that's been out for like ever, and we never got it until whenever the hell this came out. I don't know if it came out like a year or two ago or something. Let's say 2013, so like two years ago. Um, but I threw it. It's now on the ground. I don't feel like picking it up. I'll pick it up later in a bit. But, um, that's how lazy I am. But it's a fun little game. It's got its, it's got its things where you can... The one thing I love about it is that you can... You don't even have to fight in this game. You can do... Except boss battles. Except for boss battles, you, you have to fight. You have to fight boss battles. But every other enemy, unless you piss them off, you can just talk to them and eventually they'll leave. They'll sometimes even give you an item. Like, I remember some of my favorite, mo favorite moments of this game uh, was, like, discussing the deep and emotional thoughts of why did God create humans? And it's just like, yo, this is some steep shit right here. I know in Persona 2, I believe, you could talk to demons about manliness and that would like piss them off or make them run away or something. Um, but, you know, this one actually has them go into like full detail about what the hell they're talking about. I, I kind of like that. It's, it's kind of fun to do that. I, I always prefer talking, especially if you like make friends with them, they'll fight with, alongside you. And then you get the fusion thing, like from the Persona games where you fuse demons. Or fuse persona in, this, in that game's case. You know, this one's demons. Whatever. Uh, next one's a, sh a shit game. A shit game. It's a shit game. Uh, Mario Party Island Tour. Yeah, I dropped it on my laptop. It's because that's how shit it is. Like, I, look, I don't even want to touch that thing. Fuck it. And the reason I say it's a shit game is because I'm a huge fan of Mario Party. And um, until Mario Party 9, with that god damn car that they're bringing back from Mario Party 10 for whatever fucking brain tumor they got going that thought that was a good idea. I mean, I, I know Hudson Soft isn't making the games anymore, but did Hudson Soft have like a copyright on making the boards and stars fun? Or at least in a, like, like making the boards fun? The boards in this aren't fun. The boards in 9 aren't fun. I can guarantee the boards in 10 aren't going to be fun. You know, playing Mario, playing rounds of Mario Party where you have to go and find the star, and then the star is what pretty much declares the winner of the board, is fun. 
Not the amount of mini games you win. Granted, mini games could have a potential thing into it if you play Mario Party with the bonus stars or whatever. But this one really, like, this one probably 9 and 10 also, they really wanted you to, like, pay attention to mini games. The mini games are the freaking highlight of this. Not the boards. The boards are just kind of an afterthought. It's af it's obvious as shit they, they were an afterthought. Especially since the boards are basically designed all around the mini games. And I'm just not one of those people that comes back to Mario Party to play the mini games over and over. I'm coming to Mario Party to play the boards over and over. But whatever. I guess I'm like the only one on the planet that does that. But then again, seeing the amount of shit that Mario Party 9 gets from everyone else in the Mario Party fandom, uh, I don't think I am. Let's see. It's about an hour and five minutes. Um, got this, four 3DS games, and uh, six Wii U. Um, I'll try to keep them all short. So this game can video. This isn't a game. Life isn't a game, kids. Kids, I know, like, I'm pretty sure a good portion of my fan base is probably kids. If you are watching right now, life isn't a game, okay? Hey, this isn't Grand Theft Auto, where you can, like, kill someone and run away, hide in a corner, and all of a sudden the cops will forget you exist, and the next time they see you, they'll be like, Hey, buddy, what's up? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm on. Uh, I'm on probably, like, a shit ton of soda. Sugar. S something. I don't do drugs. I don't. This is just how I normally am. Uh, ask any of my friends. This is how I normally am. Um, but next up, Fantasy Life. Fantas fantasy Life. Yeah. You know, this is actually a fun game. I kind of want to try out the multiplayer in this. Because from what it sounds like, it sounds like the multiplayer. You can, ex like... Online multiplayer mainly is that you can explore the entire world, the entire huge as shit world in this game, you know, with your friends, and that that sounds amazing to me, because how many games on the Nintendo system allow you to explore huge worlds with your buddies online? I know a lot of them will allow you to do it like local co-op, but online, and it's not one of those where you're trying to hunt each other down, but you're actually like on the same side and fighting enemies together. Yo, that's what I want to do in this game. And also, I kind of like the uh, like the job class system. Um, that's, that's it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's, it's fantasy life. I know a lot of people enjoy that game because I hear a lot of people talk about it. Speaking of hearing a lot of people talk about it and a lot of people seem to enjoy it, to the point where there's videos still made to this day trying to hype the shit out of it, Tomodachi Life. Yeah. Tomodachi Life. You know, the, the, when this came out, people were like, this is going to be the new, new Animal Crossing. This is going to take over Animal Crossing. It's going to take Animal Crossing's place. No, it's it's not. It's not anything like Animal Crossing. What the fuck kind of drugs are you on? This, this is nothing like Animal Crossing. You basically play a god to these things. And... Yeah, you do favors for them, but you can tell them to fuck off with their favors. In front of it's just basically you just play like a deity. You just watch them have fun while you're just watching them have fun. Like they're having fun while you're sitting there watching them have fun. Like what? The, I want in on the fun. I want in on the fun of my me and Apollo for Mace Attorney go you uh, you know, having a tea party. Or, or some, you know, what the fuck? Why can't I? Why can't I have a tea party? You know, I want a t I want a tea party. No, no one's give a tea party. I just realized it's it's quite a shit in here. People are sleeping. I'm loud as fuck right now. But, um. Yeah, decided if I want to keep going. Fuck it, it's almost over, so I'll keep going. Um, next up, like I say with Paper Mario, the other one is here, Sticker Star. Yeah. What can I say about Sticker Star? Not much I can say about Sticker Star. As a Paper Mario game, 
Sticker Star is shit. There's no getting around it. As a Paper Mario game, it has nothing that makes Paper Mario Paper Mario other than the fact that Mario was made of paper. It, that that's it. That that's all that's here. Now as a game on its own, it's great. I, I enjoy it as a game on as a game on its own. Um but when compared to Super to Thousand Year Door to the original it's shit. It, uh, I really hope that um the backlash this game gets doesn't like make Miyamoto, whoever's in charge of this, the Paper Mario series think that we're we don't want Paper Mario anymore. We do. We want Paper Mario again. We don't want a shit Paper Mario though. We don't want a game that's good on its own, but shit when compared to the other ones. Granted, whatever happens next, as long as that has a leveling up system instead of just a hard up system, it will most likely be better than Sticker Star. Ugh, I don't know. Next up, Kid Icarus Uprising. Yeah, I decided to finish off the Kid Icarus games. And I gotta say, this is a million times better than the classics. Um, at least, what I, you know, the original Kid Icarus on NES and Kid Icarus of Mr. Monsters on the NES. This is like ten times, like a hundred times better than those. Um... You know, well, it takes some time getting used to the controls. Um, I I, did, I think I did like a match, an online match with one of my buddies who helped me learn the controls a bit better. And once you get used to it, the it's, it's a really fun game with some of the best writing I think I've seen in a while. I mean, I haven't seen many games make me laugh this hard. It, it's, it's just a really fun game. Um, I didn't get the AR cards that were supposed to come with it. But, you know... It's a, it's a fun game, a lot of references to the older games, so if you've played the older Kid Icarus and you want to check out Uprising, there's a lot of fan service for you. Yeah. Next up, last 3DS, and then the 6 Wii U, and this video is done in like an hour and a half, if not two, because I like to go on about stupid shit that has nothing to do, like this rant. Um, so the one person that's still watching, the last 3DS game is... Layton versus Wright. Yeah, I'm not even going to say the full title. Fuck saying the full title. But yeah. What did I say about it? It's my first Layton game on the 3DS. I didn't. I haven't played Ezrian Legacy or whatever that one about the mask is. Um, and I gotta. Say, I've heard this is like a more more of a Layton game than a Phoenix Wright game, and I I, I can agree with that. Um, it's 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 not even the fact that you mostly play as Layton and and don't play as Phoenix that much. It's not the fact that there's more puzzles to, in the game than there are court cases. Which you know, no shit, Sherlock. Puzzles are easier to put into a game than than a full court case, um, or at least into a game like this. Um. But it's the fact that so much about the Layton series, so much about Layton's gameplay is in the game. Even when you're playing as Phoenix Wright, there is still that Layton-esque feel to how his gameplay even works. I mean, the fucking hint coins are in the trials. And the hint coins basically make it so the trials aren't even a, are just a complete joke. Like, there's no reason to do a testimony. Because if the second you use a hint coin, it's just like, hey, here's what you got. Here's where you got to present. Here's what you got to press. And uh, hey, here's the item that you got to pr present. F you know, fuck making you even guess. Here's the obvious one. You know, it's it's not even a hint at that point. It's like it's basically a walkthrough. But yeah. Um, other than that, I, I'm actually I actually enjoy it. It's it's got an interesting story. I know a lot of people were waiting for this game. I, whether or not it, it met their like expectations for it, I don't know. I didn't really have a whole lot of expectations for it because when it was when it came out, um, I didn't even play a Phoenix Wright game. Played a uh, played like you know Layton's Diabolical Box, and that was that was a fun game. Beat it really fast, but beat Diabolical Box fast. I'm still working on this. 
yeah, that's it for 3DS. Now, last section, Wii U. Um, starting off with, oh god, oh man, what do I even want to say about this one? Well, I can start off saying what it is. Watch dogs. Watch underscore dogs. Yeah. Um, what can I say about this? Uh, first off, I don't agree with the backlash the game gets. It gets a lot of backlash for its graphics. To me, so what? Yeah, the game doesn't look as good as it did at E3. And... Is, is that it? Oh, oh, the driving controls are awkward. Not really. How, how are they awkward? Maybe maybe it's awkward in the other systems, but on the Wii U version, it's it's, it's a, they work fine. The, the hacking isn't as fun? Yeah, it is. What the fuck kind of shit are you on? I have so much fun hacking in this game. You know, I kind of wish I could use that little app thing, the CTOS Mobile Companion app. So, like, when I'm away from the game, I can still interact with it. But, you know, my iPod isn't an iPod 7 or whatever that it requires. But, yeah, it, it's... Since the Wii U will never get Grand Theft Auto. Never. Never in its life will it get anything... It will never get a Grand Theft Auto game or anything close to it from Rockstar. Um... This is our best. This is basically what Wii U owners got to deal with. And maybe that's why I don't have as many issues with this. Because I wanted Grand Theft Auto on Wii U. And I got Watch Dogs. And you know what? It's a fun game. You don't like it fine. Graphics matter that much to you. If the driving controls are indeed worse. On the other systems. Whatever. Yeah. Next up is a game. Have I even talked about this? For in like any of my videos, I probably have. Um, Disney Infinity 2.0. Yeah, not, not much to it on the back. Yeah, the box itself basically exists to be the box to carry it. It, you know, it tells you a. Like, it, it doesn't even give like a description of the game at all. On this, um, most of what's there described with it? Everything about like. <laughs> Everything about this game basically requires you to spend extra money. To get a storyline for the game, you gotta spend extra money. To get different characters to play as, you gotta spend extra money. Now some of you may be saying, well, you know what, you actually kinda... You, Ryan, you, you enjoy Skylanders a bit. Yeah, but with Skylanders, I just had to pay for the starter pack. You know, to get a storyline. And... To get a, get a game to play through. Granted, with this, if you just get a starter, you can get the Marvel Super Heroes pack, which is what I got. And it's how I got, like, so, you know, several of the figures I got. Um, but, I just, I don't know. I, I kind of wish there was some kind of, like, underlying story to it. But, other than that, it's a fun game. It's got a shit ton of replayability with the, um... Like with the toy box mode, I I spent a fuck ton of time in the toy box mode. This has probably become one of my most played games in a while, actually. Um, but yeah, um, toy box mode, the community content, which I play through a lot of the community content with my friends, and a lot of the community content's buggy as shit. Like it's rare that we actually complete a level without running into several bugs. Yeah. Next up, Sonic Lost World. Yeah, one of the uh, three games in the Sega, the Sega Nintendo partnership doohickey with this boom and the Olympic games. And I gotta say, I actually enjoy this. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's fun. Granted, I kind of wish I got the Deadly Six thing because I did. I didn't, even though it says, even though it says, Dead Deadly 6, Deadly 6 Bonus Edition, and I didn't get the DLC thing, so I gotta pay real money to play those levels. That, that just won't do. No, I can't play real money. 
But uh, yeah, it's it's a fun game. The controls the controls take a while to get, to get used to. Um, it, it definitely did take a while for me to get used to it. Some people will say the whole game's shit because it takes a while to get used to controls. Um, you know, and I don't mean that the controls take a while to get used to in the sense of like secret rings, because people could say like, oh, see, if you could say the same thing with secret rings. This control scheme was shit. But if you took your time, you could get used to it and get and maybe have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, I got to end game with secret rings and still couldn't figure out how the hell the controls worked. But Lost World, it only took me like a few levels to figure out the controls, and then I was zipping through it having fun. You know, is that isn't that all that matters? Does it really need to have a dark, gritty storyline? Can it not be campy and funny? Why? why what is so bad about a campy and funny storyline for Sonic? I, I don't know. That that's a discussion for another time. The whole Sonic fan base in itself. Whatever. Next up, NES Remix Pack. Yeah. Now I got this game simply because one of my friends, Icy, was a uh, Saying, oh, the game's difficult as crap. It's not fun because it's difficult. And then so I was like, you know what? I love difficult games. I should probably check out Dark Souls. So, so I could, like, practice slitting my own wrists. Because that's what Dark Souls does. But, uh, I got it. And then I, like, blew through some of the games on here, like, real quick. Like, three-star them with no challenge at all. But then some of the other ones, I'm like, oh, God, that, that's hard. What the hell? They, how do they expect me to do this? Uh, but it's a fun game, and I really like that it comes with the original Mario Brothers. Like, I know it's in reverse, and you're playing as Luigi, but it's still the complete original Mario Brothers. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun game. And I like it. I like it. And you know, Remix? It's good. Especially the pack, where you get both of them, instead of just one or two. You, you get both of them, which is cool. <coughs> yeah, it's almost over, guys. I promise, just, just two games. Starting off with the, the, this one... Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in, like, forever. And this is the first one I actually own. I played, uh, 3 and Brotherhood, I want to say. It was either Brotherhood or Revelations I played. Um. But yeah, it, it's a fun game. It's definitely better than 3. Um, it, it's a hundred times better than 3 could even hope to be. Um, I actually do like the ship sailing sequence. I do know a lot of people didn't like the um, sailing with the ship, didn't like the naval battles. Um, but I actually like them. I, I like the naval battles. I also like running around a gigantic city, simply for the fact that I can run around a gigantic city. Some people don't like that it's so simple and easy to run around this gigantic city um, and climb on everything. Um, it's so simple to do that, but to me, I'm like, dude, that's it's fun. It's better than what Assassin's Creed 3 was offering me to run around in. Oh, I also like that the uh, your crew will sing like the songs that you collect through the game. And now, the one person that's left watching this, I thank you from the deepest of my heart. Because I'm tired of shit. You're probably tired also of hearing me go on. So let's get the last one out of the way. Lego City Undercover. Now, I wanted to check this game out. I know that every time I do that, they put a game up to the thing, it screws up the lighting. Um, but I've been wanting to check this game out for a while. I love the LEGO games. I, lo I love LEGO Star Wars, LEGO Indiana Jones, LEGO Batman. Is there any other LEGO games? I haven't played LEGO Ninjago, LEGO Battle, LEGO... What was it? You, you know, the LEGO Racers... The, the, the Lego Chimas. The Lego City Undercover. The references in this game are just too much. Too much too much for one person to handle. You need breaks. You need breaks from the references. That's not a bad thing. Just, I love them. I love the references. I love them. Though I think the game benefits a lot from the references it makes to other buddy cop comedy things. Um, like Starsky and Hutch, um, Shawshank Redemption, because that's a buddy cop comedy movie. Totally. Totally a comedy. Um, Shawshank Redemption, funniest movie I've ever seen in my life. 
Um, funnier than uh, this here, 21 Jump Street. But it's funny, funnier than that. Sh it's funnier than that shit. Um, yeah, it's, it's way funnier. Um, what other references did he make? I don't know. Oh, I haven't played the Lego Movie game either. Heard that one's good though. But yeah, uh, it's a fun game. It's kind of like Lego Grand Theft Auto. Not much more you can say about it than that. And before this actually hits an hour and a half, I want to say to the one person that sat through this thing, you're a god. Tell me your name, and I will pray to you every night. I will accept everything. I, I Anytime I want something, I will say, please insert person name here I, I don't know <laughs> it's it's 1 30 at night guys um this video went on way longer than it should have but i had a lot of games to go over uh hopefully smash tomorrow or today whenever the hell this gets uploaded um smash or zack and wiki whatever whatever supposed to be uploaded i think it's smash um yeah enjoy the play videos if I, if I said something stupid here I made you unsubscribe I'm sorry but well I'm not sorry I don't really give a shit why the hell would I be sorry for my opinions um but you know so um if you want to bitch slap me for some I do it like I do it to myself like 10 times a day yeah Bye bye, everyone. See you in the next video when I'm awake. Bye bye.